Yabruk Nishan, I want to greet you all with a conversation. Not as much as a teaching, but a conversation. The rhetoric today, as far as terminology and words, and how those that are Hebrew Israelites that identify as that, how ruthless many are and the way they approach those that are the same hue of skin color and this is a a conversation i put together in 2017 i want to discuss this today as far as the word and these are terms i don't use they're not a part of my vocabulary but I will utilize them today to make sure that we all comprehend and understand. And it is the word nigger or niggerly that many apply that to people of my hue. These are the same ones that said that it was the beginning of slavery in 1619. Their prophecies never fulfilled. We were the people that were supposed to make our exodus here from this nation in 2019. It did not happen. And so that has been swept under the rug, and no one talks about that anymore. These are the same people that in 2000, I recall, because they were telling us of this cataclysmic mayhem because of the computers and the numbering system. Hardly any of them had any kind of science knowledge of that but that was the horn that many were blowing I didn't buy one second of it there were not that many videos on YouTube at that time and now we see a proliferation of them they have exploded and they address each other in such ways that it is not even asinine. It is not even foolish. I will never call one of my hue that. I will never use a derogative of that nature to speak to those that look like me. They tell you that the word nigger, its meaning, nigger, when it talks about in Torah, the one. That was from Zimeon. That was the place of his origin. And the word simply implies black. And every term that it is used, naga, in the language of the Latin, the Greek, it is always. Nagi, nega, miga. It has nothing to do with a people that identifies a class. Let me give you just a little history first here. I want to share this with you. When the words began to their identifiers of what and who. As far as the term Afro-American, that was not introduced into our vocabulary until 1988. I recall that. As Jesse Jackson called the nation of Yas Elek, that's when that came about. Before the, then, as a teenager in the 60s, we will call everything from colored people Negro. But it was one thing you did not call each other back then. It was the term black. Those were fighting words. 
you did not address any one of my hue as being black. It wasn't until 1968. That's what I mean when I was a teenager. I was no teenager in 1988. But in 1968, there was a song by James Brown. It was released in 78, 68. And the song went, say it now, boom, 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 I'm black and I'm proud. And that was a revolutionary identity of a people that was so marginalized and ostracized. I recall these events. And when James Brown put the song out, Say It Loud, I'm back, Black and I'm Proud, well, it was nothing for the transition of people of my hue to say that. And so that was the term until 1988, Jesse Jackson was the one that introduced that phrase unto us. The word nigger was a part of the vocabulary. It became firmly entrenched and established in the 21st century. And from the 18th century until the 20th century, they didn't even capitalize the word negro. It was not a proper noun. So they did not even capitalize that word Negro. And what happened in that transition, we as a people, because that's what we call ourselves in the 50s and 60s, and before then. But in the 60s, I recall so vividly because I'm out of that time, born in the 50s. And so our expression to each other, you call one a nigger, that was a fight. And that's just the fact of the matter. We did not despair one another like that. Well, is that term in Torah, I want to show us nation as we talk today. Shirach makes a statement in Shirach 31, 24. And he talks about those in the finery of wines and drinking. And what Yah said to him, the actions of one that we think are polished and proper, and they gather, and the Torah says they act niggerly. Let me read. It says the whole city, Shirach 31, 24, the whole city shall murmur of the one who is niggerly. The word chelai, chelai. It is almost the sound of ki, chelai, ke'ewai. But it's chelai. And those that are roots, those that are brass, they're beastly. And they're without any kind of common sense and decency. It is in the Torah, in Shirach 31, 24. And he expressed how they were niggerly with food, and their testimony of niggerlessness is accurate. In essence, they were some of the misers and stingy individuals. That is what niggerlessness is, or lunes. And so the term is spoken in Torah. And even it is represented in Strong's, the Concordians, 3596. It is kilai, kilai, it is kilai. And it means this, in the sense of without. That's what the word means. Niggerly, 
has nothing to do with my complexion, my skin tone at all. And you find those on every street corner in the major cities or complex. And that's how they address the women of my heel and everyone. And they speak to them in such rude ways and call them that. It is not even appalling. I'm going to conversate today openly. These are the same ones that lie. I, can I read something in our conversation? I want to read this in the Barin, the Romani, what the Torah says. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 64, they always go to that chapter. Let us examine each word and the phraseology of the word, the context, what it is implying. This is what it says in the Barim 28, 64. He says, and you shall scatter. In the Hebraic tongue, the word scatter is putz, P-O-O-T-S. In essence, to understand what scattering is, experiment with this. And these are small seeds of the Baraskas family. All kinds of turnips take different kind. Put them in your hand, and you go outside and fling them as far as you can in your hand. You cannot tell the uh, purple turnips from the colored greens, from any kind of cabbage seeds, broccoli, uh, cauliflower. You cannot tell, and you cannot even find one. Unless there is a thorough examination down on your knees, you may be to find one, but you cannot identify it. I'm saying that to say this, because the book that many say they lehag, they study, it implies this. This is the chapter that all Hebrew Israelites use. 2864. And Yahshua shall put you among, look at the terminology here, this preposition, among. It is a word, that word is used before the noun, people. He says, I shall scatter you, who, where? Among, the word A-L-L -L doesn't mean a singular people or kind. The word whole represents the whole of everything included. The Hebraic term, the word pas, P-A-S, in Greek, it defines the very same thing. He did not say, I will scatter you to some nations, the new world, one nation. And this is the thesis and the concept of the Hebrew Israelites. That's not what Yah says in Dibarim. I will scatter you among a part, a participant, among all, every people, every kind, Hamites, uh, uh, Hamites, uh, Yebusites, and all, from every hue of skin color. And that's the way true Yisra'i looked. We know African can be a... Well, Africa is only the continent, my friend. There is a variation of people. And when we look at the land that Yah promised the nation is between the Greek river, why would he promise them that if that term Africa has no meaning or any substance in the book? But the land he gave us is from the great river Nile. You prat, Euphrates. That is where the Garden of Eden was. Um, it's just such a violent 
attitude. Now, many of us trying to ease away from that, but in the days, they did not. I did a teaching on, quote, the dirty, stinking Africans, because that's what they will call them. That's how they address those from that continent. And our ignorance, our stupidity, doesn't even tell us that ah, they were there in that land called Africa. Were they segregated by themselves? They didn't associate with the Hamites or the sons of Esau and all of that? Sure they did. Sure they did. The sons of Israel married anything that looked like a woman. And that's just a fact. So 1619 hasn't proven out in 1990 and 1916. Uh, uh, no one talks about it. It's quiet. He says this, getting back to Dibarim. He's going to scatter you among all. Don't forget that nation. He used the word all people, the words am, the Hebrew tongue. The word goy or goyim, it is used not generally for the people of Yisrael, but it is used in that capacity as well. Because we have been the most hedonistic people on the face of the earth. And he expressed this, I will scatter you among all nations from, he gives us a point, from one, from Echad, that which is without in it fixed or specified place, but he said from one end of the Eretz, and that implies in the Hebrew tongue, the whole earth, as opposed to Ola, meaning that if you live in New York City, you're part of the earth, or in China or Russia or on the continent of Africa. But when Yah says he will scatter us from one end to the other, other end of the whole earth, that means beyond our ability to measure. And then he clarified that and said even to the other. <clears throat> and he said, there you're going to go and serve gods. Can I ask you one question? Is there one consensus among those that are Hebrew Israelites? They talk each other. They call them that word that we're discussing without any regards, no respect, no honor, no thought, no consideration. This house is separated from that house, uh, that house, and they don't realize their ignorance, what they could do collectively as far as creating an oath an oasis of land and property for the people. In the large cities, they own nothing. When I say that they're not buying the buildings, they don't own the buildings like the Jews, others, like those from Russia and Ukraine. They don't do that. They do not bring their resources together and create a bank. Why not that? But I don't know as far as the vision, but their leaders live well. How about you, Riyadh Daiweed? I have a little home 16 foot wide and 32 foot long. It's a lovely home. I love it. My little office. Let's finish this in Dibarim 68. He says, even unto the other, you shall go serve gods that neither you nor your father have known, even gods of wood and stones. Our forefathers did not talk like this. They did not despise each other in this fashion, and they literally, you cannot call someone that and utilize that term, because that term means something that is beyond filth, they're corrupt, nasty, they stink to the lower hells. They're not worth a damn penny. 
And so when you address those that you call brother, you call them brother. It's amazing that they will not express the very beauty of Yah's house that the people will understand. They will talk to women like they are mine. I wouldn't even speak to a full-fledged whore that way. I don't care how she dressed. And many of them talk that way. Yet they have mothers. And some may, I don't know, the young ones may live in the house with their mother. May be of the same birth that I am, a bastard son. I'm going to instruct us in this, not with just one little episode. This is part one. I want to limit it to one hour long. Back to Debarim 427. And this is when Yah warned us and the reason why for our disobedience. And not only that, he promised to have compassion upon the true remnant of Yisra'ya'im. It's amazing how you tear one another down. I deal with corruption and wickedness. The Torah says, and Yah shall scatter you, Debarim 427, he shall put, and the word puts, it also has this implication that he's going to dash us into pieces like you take sharp cleavers and just dash everything meat or bread into pieces and then disperse you where you won't even be able to find anything. Like the gangsters would do in the cities, they take a body, cut it up, put pieces everywhere. If you find one piece, you'll never find the other. And that is the range of how difficult it is. You're not known as a true Hebrew Yisraelite because of this. Because you despise those that say they are simply from the continent of Africa. And the people, afro asian people, study that terminology. And you call them dirty and stinking, they're not worth nothing to you. Yet he said, I will cut you in pieces. And he says this, I will scatter you among the nations. That is not a singular terminology, it is plural. Because it has a S. I will scatter you among the nations. Not a nation, America. I will scatter you among the nations. I will scatter you among the nations. Hebrew Israelite. Let me ask this question. If anyone hear me, I would love to get one of your charts. How can I look to try to purchase one? I cannot find one that is for sale. And it is one specific one I want. Which one is that? He calls himself the Apostle. Ah, uh, GMS. I want GMS. I want that poster. I want to buy it. I will purchase it. Because I am intrigued. Slavery began in the 1400s. And many of the slaves, uh, that's why there's so many of those of my hue in, in Haiti. But I don't see Brazil on your map. And Brazil has more people of color from that slave embargo. They have double the amount, more than that of the Americans. Yours entity of his people, their magnitude, their beauty shall be like the stars of the heaven. That's what he promised our father, Avraham. You can't know me them, you don't know where they are because the brightness, the light. And that's why there are more of those in Cuba, Cuba, than here because they worked the cane fields. The, the Spanish, you know, brought them over to work. They bought them. 
And if that's the case, why were they all sold off the coast of Africa? Why were they there? So the one go to that piece of land called Israel and capture them. Is that how it went? Your thesis of any aspect of the people of Israel, it is somewhat ignorant. And I say that without an apology. I'm just talking. I'm not here for a fight. I'm an, I am an old man. Although I got my military attire on, I'm a Vietnam era veteran. I'm not here to fight, but I'm here to debate any man. Any man. And then this is what he says to us. I will scatter you among the nations, the am, and simply implies members of one people. That's what the words am, am means in the Hebrew Hebrew expression. And he said, I will scatter you. I, I, I want you to understand this nation, among nations. And then he says, and you shall be left, <coughs> excuse me, mass or few in numbers among the goi, the heathens. Usually the word goi or goi or gohim simply applies to people that are non-Hebraic or foreign nations. And then he says, where Yah shall lead you. That means he will be our guidance or guide us. No, the word lead here is nachach. Nach, in a W-H-A-G, nachach. It implies to drive you away. I'm going to drive you away from me. Yet through all of that, there's a willingness of his and a desire to show his nation compassion. That's what it is, to show us compassion. And he did not drive us all here. Let me go back to Heb uh, Debarim 60, I mean 28, 24, that all you Hebrews read. When he talks about here in this verse from one in, he used the word in. It is chat, chatseth, chatseth. The word in, E-N-D. This is how you express this, chatseth. From one end of the earth, he is saying here, from one extreme to the uttermost of the other extremity. That's why you have people that are dog you even in Alaska, Eskimos, in Russia. They are Russians that are darker than you or me. He scattered his people and they went everywhere running from him. I want to temper this conversation with a little scripture that we may understand what Torah says and what it implies. And now when they use this word, I don't like it. I want to use it for the sake of these teachings. Nigga. There's a term in Torah that express that it is the same keli, kelai. It is the word found in Jeremiah, I mean, Isaiah, Yeshaya. And this is when he talks about cruelty. Here in Jeremiah, I do apologize, Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 7. He talks about the instruments. He's talking about the keli. The keli also of the churl are evil. He's talking about the instrument of those that are wicked and those that will be identified as far as what you call a nigger. The instruments, the yokes, they are evil. They devise wickedness and their devices are wicked to destroy the poor with what? Lying words. You're lied to the people out there. 
<clears throat> you lie. And that's the truth. And you have these like, young men that really, they have learned phrases. Our lies will represent truly what I is. Even when the needy speaks right. And this is another misinterpretation. Something that is so violent in their comprehension of it. That was spoken and is spoken in Ahasath, Shilishim. The Acts of the Apostles here. Acts 31. They use this scuttle to say that. You see, we are niggas. That's not the truth, my friend. They don't even talk about the other class of those that were there. I will read this for in this conversation. Acts 31. <clears throat> Now there were in the congregation, congregation that was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. These were prophets and teachers. As Barnabas, Jimeon, the one <clears throat> who's the originality of that name, or in the sense the name Chepha Peter comes from. He was called he was called Neger, not Niger, Nech, Neger, Neger. And the word simply means black. He was not a fool. He was a wise man. He was not stupid. And the word Neger implies you're jackass, a stupid buffoon. And then above all that, you're black. And they have utilized that, talking to ignorant people that buy it. He used the word nega, which is a place, and the meaning implies black. The word is utilized in many languages to mean just the color has nothing to do with the attributes of one. No. <clears throat> and then there were Lucia of Cyrene. Can I ask you all a question? I want you to think for a moment, people. And ask yourself this question. In the lives of us, where have our lives Surely men enhance by these theses that uh, I don't see where they produce genuine love for each other. There's an association. These men were from Cyrene. Hmm. Where is Cyrene? Where is Irene? What country that we can associate Irene with? Is it close to uh, England or Libya? Which one? Where is England and where is Libya? I'll leave that to you to find out. Is it close to Libya? Well, where is Libya? What continent is it on? Is it on the continent of Africa where it never freezes? That's all the word implies. And yet the terminology is used in a way that is so violent. I would never call a man that. And then also man na'in, man na'in, <clears throat> that many of us that as we search out Torah, we really don't spend time to examine things. We hear things and that's all that we learn because we don't search words. We don't know how to. 
because it takes an enormous amount of energy and time. I just put together a teaching this morning. I finished it up this morning. I spent hours in it. But I can compile teachings on any subject. Give me three hours. You will have an exceptional teaching. That is the truth. On any subject. And so these were those collection of men there. Those that were there for the tremendous power and the revelation of Yah's truth, which had been brought up with Hororodias or Hororas, this vile one and Shaul. I want to read what the word Neha means, black is the additional of a distinguished name given to Simeon and was one of the teachers and prophets in the congregation at Antioch. How do you get nigger out of that? The word, it's phonetics is different and everything. I simply want to know how you get nigger out of that. You cannot get nigger out. The word nigger was made up by Caucasians to truly destroy the essence of people of my color. <coughs> Excuse me, nation. Do a Google search. I use all three of the engines in my home. I have three monitors here, and I use them all. I use three of them. Let me put it that way. And a Google search engine on the word just nigger, there are over 5 million. You can read that in your lifetime, your wife, and all your children. There's 5 million results. And I want to read from that. I want to give you the web. Here is one particular. It is called, it is called African Americans Registry. It is a registry. It tells us on this date, we look at the history of the word nigger in America. Word that is still sit at the center of anti-black verbal distortion. And that's what it is. The history of the word nigger is often traced to the Latin word nigger, meaning black, just the color black. The word became a noun. See, that's the difference. The difference between a verb and a noun, an expression, an action. The word became a noun, negro, black person in English, and simply the color of black in Spanish, Portugal, in the early modern French, it was nigger, it became nigri, it later became nigress, black woman, negress. That's what they call the black woman, negress. And unmistakably a part of the language history. One can compare to Negri, the derogatory nigger, an early English substitute such as niga, 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 and nigo, that developed into the lexicon. That's what he did. Semantic, true vision or version in English. It is probable. Probable that the nigger is a phonetic spelling of the white southern mispronunciation of Negro. And so even with that, what this, the registry of people of my you, it is simply saying that because you know when them more down here in the town, they, they could not, they didn't say so in the child. Tauf. So the verbalizing words were not the most distinct. 
And because there was a vile repute, an acceptance of people of our color, <clears throat> they would use words. Hey, you think that you, you you think that they can say the word nigger, that nigger over there? They don't say there. I talk to Caucasians all the time that are southern. I can tell you, they never give me trouble. And they're going to prove to me I always get the best deal. And I talk black and white issues all the time. I do, but I always get the best deal. I want to read this from Wikipedia. Everyone, the matter of fact, I subscribe to Wikipedia. I pay, I give an offering every year $25 because I utilize it. And so you got a diversity of scholarship from all kinds. And you have those that do somewhat, I believe, of a forensic type of research on words or things that are put there. But I want to read this from Wikipedia. I utilize a variation of encyclopedia dictionaries. I just don't use one. I use a volume. I got one open here. I got three here. How many I got over here? I don't know how many windows I have open there. And so I, I utilize all kinds of resources. In the English language, the word nigger is an ethnic slur. It's used to attack black people, essentially or especially African Americans, started in the late 90s. <clears throat> Referring to nigger have been progressively replaced by the euphemism of the N-word. So I don't even utilize either one. If I do, it will be that word. Notably is the case where nigger is mentioned but not directly used. That's what they say. They can say, well, I don't even, <clears throat> I've tried to destroy that word and I haven't you. I, I, there was one thing in my days that when you call someone that you, you better, you better be ready to throw hands. You better be ready to fight. And there were many fights on that word. I come up in that time. You didn't do that. You did not. The word originated. And yet they say that when those of my hue, you say nigga. That it's friendship. No, they're telling you you're stupid like them. The word originated in the 18th century as an adaptation to the Spanish word negro, a descendant of the African or the Latin adjective nigger or nigger, which means black. That's all it means. That's it. Over the time, it took on a derogatory connotation and became a racial insult in the 20th century. That long ago? That was yesterday. Accordingly, it began to disappear from general popular culture. Not among the Hebrew Israelites. It in, its inclusion is classical work of literature has sparked controversy, ongoing debates. The variants, I want to give you the variants of different forms of that word nigger. In the English language, uh, the, the original English language, it was nigger, also spelled N-I-G-E-R, not with the two Gs. Was a word for dark-skinned individual. In the earliest known published use of the term dates, from 1574. And a work alludes, alluding to the niggers or of a tap o bearing witness, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, the first derogative use of the term nigger was recorded two centuries later in 1775. That's when it was. That's the truth. 
because they bear witness throughout wreckage and many forms of wreckage that there is no there is no kind of uh, commission for each other to give a direct meaning and so what i did i went and i used different resources i went to the etymology dictionary online you can find it i utilized that one and others i utilized dictionaries to speak phonetically words that i can't pronounce and i put them in that and they will pronounce it for me and i began to work with that word so that i can pronounce it properly the word the etymology or the etymology dictionary online i use that i keep that one the opener all time the word nigga the noun means a stingy person a miser late 14th century nigad nigad nigrat also with the variations that's what it is the variation nigun nigun in the 13th century a word of uncertain origin they don't even know what the word came from And so the Hebrew Israelites using that in the writings of Acts that they call one or it was derogatory that a mother gave a child a name of that nature, a father. It is beyond stupidity. It talks about the suffix of the word suggests French origin, art, art. But the root word is possibility from earlier new stingy 13th century which perhaps a form of a scandinavian source related to the old norris nigua nigua relating to hanagor hanagor stingy from proto grammatic a german it means Nau Zaz, Nau Zaz, a source of the Swedish language, Nijog, Nijog. Close, careful. And the German word Genu, precise, exact. Perhaps also related to the English, Nua, stingy, niggerly, which did not survive in the Middle English, a now nig, nig, niggerly person, to attest from the 13th century. But consider this unlikely to be the source of the long words. As Hebrew Israelites, how is it that you have no idea of the origin or the concept of that terminology in the sense, in the sense that it was used among a people that was not even marginalized, stolen, purchased. It was only one place that the Hebrews knew they had a safe passage. And that was through that land. I'm going to teach on that nation and show us some things i will even the words kush or the kushite the word simply implies black kush the kushite that's what it implies i want to read this from eagle <clears throat> He talks about the topaz of the pit dah, this precious stone. He tells us where it's from. Kush. Kush. Kush is black. Shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with the pure gold. In that sense, I know what this is implying. <clears throat> and he is speaking of the inestimable. It cannot be estimated, the knowledge and the wisdom of Yadavayim. 
and the only thing he give us some kind of constitution that relates it was from the land of Kush or the Kushite where the people that were darker than me you may say this nation let me inject this because my skin hue and the color my skin complexion and there are many that will say not many i do apologize those that call or identify see Israelites. you see some that their skin is so light how did that come about with an infusion who's your daddy that's what they ask that's the determination Juice is the mama. Yet you see the come, you see the skin variation and the colors. We should know each other by the peri, the fruit we bear. You go to the camps from what I have gleaned from their sights. And I don't go there often. Every now and then I'm sitting here, I may go. Just look on YouTube. Who's your daddy? Can I say this to us looking directly at you? I didn't meet my father until I was 50, 54 years old. Saw him one time in the last time. I don't know who his mother is, who her husband was. And no one on that side beyond that. I could not take you to run one of the graves. As far as the genealogy. On my mother's side, I can take you to her mother's grave. I cannot take you to her mother's mother's grave. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they were buried. I don't know why my skin hue is this color. And I had one brother that was beautifully, richly black. Two of them. All different fathers, though. And I had one brother that his skin complexion was as fair as anyone. As we were said, the daisies yellow. Most of these young individuals cannot go back to their grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. They don't know. Neither you. And so where there was some white man slipped in there, you see those that have children that their complexion is totally different, two parents that are blacker than black. And all of a sudden, there's a child that the skin complexion is nearly white. Many don't even know who their fathers are. Many of the young men on the streets of many of the cities have never met their father. I can speak from that application. I can And they don't know. We don't believe in DNA. Well, I tell you what, my friend, if your son or your daughter charge in a crime that they had no participation, and the only thing that will set them free is DNA, which you wanted then, I don't mess around with any of that. I go to no doctors. I don't go over 40 some years. I've never been to one. I trust you all for my healer. You're not going to a hospital in these cities and telling them you don't want a white doctor touching you. You go get drugs from the drugstore and the white pharmacist may slip you something. 
I'm going to close the day with this. This is part one. And I am not going to use these terms frequently as I did today. But you will know where I'm going with this talk. You see, I'm not preaching because I don't believe in a man covering his head when he preach. The book tells me that. And so this is simply a conversation with the nation, strangers, proselytes, you, live folks. And as they would say in my days, Kelly folks as well. This is for the nation, a conversation on to Yisrael, the seed, the Zerah of Avraham. We have come from the loins of our forefather of promise, and the promises belong to us. I say to you all, my friends, it's chilly here in South Carolina. Beautiful day, the leaves are falling rapidly. It's chilly here. It's cold. And uh, there are those that will be leaving, have love, taking care of their affairs. My Imra is not here with me because I, I don't like going out. Zachin, Rabia, his family, taking her out to get the things for the community that we need. Y'all are not self-sufficient? Well, let me ask you. Are you? All right. We're sufficient, and we will not go hungry if Walmart closed down today. Can I put it that way? <clears throat> we will not go hungry. We can eat. We know how to grow. We grow food here. We got seeds that will last year after year after year. And we can eat. We have range here that we can go and harvest wild things we are a people that have learned how to hate each other we don't want to be around each other and that's why you can express that kind of terminology unto a people that you say you love and you can call you you, you call the women such hoes and you don't even know what love is and that's the truth May the riches of Yah rest upon you, my friends. If I'm your enemy, just love me. I would tell you the truth. Yabruch nation, shalom, shalom.